Okay, the bloom is off the rose. That's what Janet said about the storm and she covers it in Andover. Uh, well, Kim, things have changed now. I actually want to break up with this storm fully. I am done with this storm. As you can see, this storm is really kind of slapping me in the face right now, so I'm not very happy. And take a look at my feet. The plows were just through here an hour ago. Now, of course, a lot of this is through the drifting, but this is just incredible. It is unbelievable, Reed, to think that the people running here right now just finished 26.2 miles in this weather. That's more than 30 degrees higher than what's considered ideal running conditions. The DA could not confirm for me if the wife was dead prior to those gruesome injuries or if those are what killed her. It is unknown why so many dolphins come ashore here. One factor is believed to be the tricky topography, the Cape, which acts as a kind of trap for these animals. And the number of strandings so far this year is staggering. Another day, another dolphin found dying or dead. So many are coming ashore now, Rescuers are no longer waiting for the calls. It's not prudent to wait anymore because we've had so many strandings right in a row. We're staging our teams uh, out in the field. We're actually departing now before low tide to be out in Wellfleet, which is our hot spot. Every day, crews from the International Fund for Animal Welfare gear up, drive to Wellfleet, and wait. Every single day this week, more dolphins have been found. We're very tired. We're, 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 uh, we've been going from January 12th, and uh, the team is actually just exhausted, and uh, so it's, it's almost a, a daily event now. About 200 animals strand themselves on the Cape each year, but not all of them dolphins. So this sad phenomenon is baffling scientists. So far, 129 dolphins have stranded themselves in just over a month, 80% of them here in Wellfleet. Of those, just 37 could be saved. 92 dolphins have died. It's in fact the largest single species stranding that we've had in, in this area of the U.S. A sad battle rescuers can barely keep up with, let alone win. And IFA is calling in crews from the aquarium and other places for mutual aid just so their own folks can get a single day off. And another crisis is brewing. Because of the number of strandings, the organization has almost exhausted its rescue budget for the year. Reporting live from Wellfleet, Janet Wu, 7 News. We are following breaking news at this hour. Cambridge police are responding to a report of a man with a long rifle and body armor reportedly in an MIT building on Mass Ave. We have Sky 7 live over the scene now. Again, just a short time ago, a passenger bus crashed into an overpass, something that we've seen multiple times on this road or on Soro Drive, just too tall, these vehicles, to fit under those bridges. And as you can see, severe damage to the top of that bus, this bus carrying students from Pennsylvania, from what we understand. And again, the numbers, we're still confirming them, but 32 people we understand are injured, some of them critically. Miracle is the best way to describe it. Just days after this surgery, that man can already move his fingers. Now, we've seen Brigham and Women's Hospital make medical history this year with a trio of face transplants. And now, medical history again with a surgery that is restoring to one man his sense of touch. Wheeled in for the world to see, Richard Mangino looks perfectly fine, but those hands are new, transplanted in a remarkable surgery. When you get something and you wake up and you see it on the end of your body and you haven't had it for nine years or ten years. The double hand transplant, the first at the Brigham, took 12 hours and a team of 40. First, they connected the bones with metal plates. And next, the muscle, tendons, arteries, veins, and three major nerves of the forearm are joined. Members of the surgical team proudly standing behind Mr. Mangino. The exact date of the surgery is being withheld to protect the identity of the donor. First Lady Michelle Obama shows off her moves on the Jimmy Fallon show. It was part of an effort to promote her Let's Move Health and Fitness campaign, and boy, does she move.
She knows how to bust a move, especially the classics. The first lady and a feminine looking Fallon showed us the evolution of mom dancing with Mrs. Obama eventually out dancing him by doing the Dougie. Now, I've seen Napoleon Dynamite, so I know some of those and she does the sprinkler and thing, but what's the Dougie? Oh, uh, well, I'm not going to show the moves, anything like that. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, terrify right. the audience with I that. I've heard first. it, and I, I think I know what it is, but no, <laughs> she's not going to get me there. Judges will have to narrow the field to 65. Final auditions will be held next week. Okay, looking at all those abs, I think I'm going to go home and do some sit-ups. Did you ask them to wear clothes to the trial? Did you just wear, <laughs> wear your underwear? Were you complaining and... there? No, no, not oh, complaining. I'm yeah. just saying, I wonder if that was, a, that was <laughs> part of the going. description. Oh, boy. I know at this point you're sick of debate, so instead of calling this the John Stewart, Bill O'Reilly rumble in the air-conditioned auditorium, maybe it's the rumble in the very fancy hotel ballroom. So let me ask you this follow-up question. What happened to the Rockefeller Republicans? Like, is there room in they're the party there. for a yeah, Bill Well, Olivia they're Schell, all Democrat, or, or is they're it, or is it Democrat. because, or even Ronald Reagan, or is it that the Tea Party ideolo ideology is what we're going to see for the party? Well, no, I, you know, look, there, there's going to be, there, there's going to be a struggle within the party whether Romney wins or loses. Howard, what do you think has been the defining issue of this election? Is it indeed jobs, as we keep hearing from Romney, and as an ardent, almost, I heard, crazy at times environmentalist? Does this bug you? I think jobs is the number one issue, but there's always another issue that's, a, that's the big issue in every campaign, and that is, does this candidate care about people like me. Well, let me ask you about the latest jobs numbers. You know, we had the final report that came out yesterday, and it seems that they weren't bad enough to hurt Romney or good enough to really help Obama. And of course, you all deal a lot with crisis and such. I think that overall, the public is very sick of the spinning that we always get. Can you comment a little bit about that and what the they're saying? The answer is yes, they are. We like to think that we're so highbrow in our politics and that we're so sophisticated and smart because it's all about the issues and the intricacies of the economy. Nah, do I like him? Okay, so let me ask you this. Given the likability factor, the feelings factor, do you think Hurricane Sandy actually hurt Romney? Well, because some people say that he had sort of an unemotional response, and then you see Governor Chris Christie praising Obama, you no. see Bloomberg, you know, in, in this time where Obama's hugging a woman and that picture gets all over the internet, do you think it's hurt him? If a natural disaster comes in, it generally hurts the incumbent by one or two points because people blame the incumbent for everything, whether they have a right to blame them or not. That's just the way people, voters are. So I just that's think all the, the heat's on Bloomberg now for the New York Marathon, so maybe the president is spared this. I think all the heat is on Bloomberg right, right now for the marathon. But so the so theory is that the literature claims that it's a one or two point gap. I don't see that here. I think the president's got a little bit of momentum here. Talking about fixing things, question for you. A lot of economists feel that the only way to work on the deficit is a combination of budget cuts and revenue increases. And it seems like your party is so dead set against any revenue increases, even minor ones, in light of other major budget cuts. Do you think that is realistic? No, I don't, um, to be rather frank about it. And the way to fix the deficit is you raise taxes back to the Clinton level, you make serious defense cuts and get some of the bloating out of there that's been put in, not by the Pentagon, by the people in Congress, and you start to make serious human services cuts. Then that's not enough. Then we got to go to entitlements. And well, we make here's serious my question for you. Too. By the way, that's a $10 fine. I'll collect know, later. Yeah, I thought but it was off. Talking it's about president. entitlements for the Democrats, Discretionary spending, as you brought up, always gets a lot of attention every election, but right. really it's a small percentage compared to entitlement spending. And it seems like the Democrats will not address these issues that are sensitive, like raising the age for Social Security, we're living longer. It seems like it just is not realistic. Okay, so not let's talk about that. what makes sense and what doesn't make sense, and then let's talk about why entitlements hasn't been on the table. Do you think we should go off the fiscal cliff as well? I, I, I'm not quite, uh, you know, I will ride with Howard to the fiscal cliff and I may do this. <laughs> like Selma and Louise just let me go I, right I, 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 I was like, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like this, and then I'm like, okay, let me get out here. I'm, I'm Brad Pitt. I'm standing let me tell on. You, let me tell I'm you, not sure I'm Avatar. ready to do. I think going over the fiscal cliff ultimately sends a very strong, positive message to investors. We are serious about the deficit. Yeah. Can I open this up to the floor because the heat's been on me to ask the questions? So I'm going to make you guys step up. And I know that's hard work for you. <laughs> because serious debate doesn't sell so well among the American people. Also, a point that I brought up earlier is that I think that there's a differentiation between news and what we call sort of scheduled whining, because it's very cheap to get pundits on air, let's be honest about it, and just complain and talk and criticize and bring up clips and make jokes about it, put on puppets, you know, 
all those things. It's a cheap way to do news. I, I really call it the equivalent of reality TV on the network news. It's, true. it's what fills cable news. You fill an hour very easily. I mean, we could probably talk for five hours here and, you know. But the good news is money. people under 35 aren't buying this and they don't watch cable television. They're, yes. I think that's a very good Except thing. Except for comedy channels. The, the interest, the interest, yeah, so you have that combination of money pressures and media pressure on these candidates. There has to be a bipartisan recognition, especially in these times, there is an overall disgust about the money that is needed to run in this country yeah. and the money that is spent for campaigns. When we're talking about you know, these cuts and entitlement spending and everything, and they're talking about billion dollar war chests that have to but be But that has raised. nothing to do with cuts and entitlement. See, that's, that's right. a mistake. No no. Well, no, 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 and I'm not gonna let you get away with that. Yes. That's a mistake that is made in the media where they make false equivalencies. What I do with my billion dollars is my business. Yes, but still, I'm not, Let me finish my point. It's not what the government does with the money it takes from me if it wants to cut, if there's a cut in entitlement. It has nothing to do with the fact that I want to write a billion dollar check to a presidential campaign. That's what I want to do with my money. That's my property, and I don't care how you feel about that. That's true, but I think it does add to the voter apathy, so, the voter disgust, the fact that because you, if I could you, moderate no, here no, for no, a minute. <laughs> no. Because hey, and, I thought you were me, supposed to pander well, to the moderator. Do you I'll think Shada Martha Rice so glad to see you? I'll finish point and I'll shut up. Because you, <laughs> as media, you set up and create the false equivalency. You, you, you make the people believe that there's somehow some equivalency between his money and his pocket, my campaign, and the government decision to cut spending programs. There is no equivalency there. Well, well actually, we're on the bleeding Excuse leading. One me, local news I only, but I understand what you mean. Possibly Definitely cable get a news. word in sideways <laughs> here. I just, do I have to scream to be heard here? <laughs> Briefly, what advice would you give to whoever holds office in January? I think the, the one advice I would give would, you know, cut the crap out uh, and get serious about the nation's health economically. Uh, and so forth. Just cut the crap out. And Mr. Dean, what would you say? I would say it, but I probably wouldn't use that word, but... Um, <laughs> would you be <laughs> no, more I, polite I, or less polite? No, I, uh, I, he would be less polite, <laughs> trust me. <laughs>